So the second lecture on tissues will be mainly concentrated on the connective tissue. It's the most abundant tissue in the body and it has a lot of functions because it has different characters. So as the name indicates, connective, it binds, binds together, supports, strengthens, protects, insulates. Blood is a fluid type. Remember, I mentioned that previously. Blood is a fluid type of connective tissue. So it transports, transports nutrients or excretory material, excretion, wastes, wastes. It's a source of immune response. Fat or adipose tissue it stores energy, as we will see that, um, and also produces heat, as we will see that in a moment. Now, how does this connective tissue differ from the epithelial tissue? The, the connective tissue has cells, and these cells, they do not form layers. They are not tightly packed. They are separated from each other, and the thing that separates them is called the matrix. So the, you can see here, the cells are separated from each other. There is the matrix. This is, I don't know, it's, is it brown? Is it pink? What do you call it? So this is the matrix in between the cells. Rarely they touch each other. And the matrix, as you can see here, that has a lot of these fibers, multiple fibers there are in the matrix, as well as some ground substance, which contains large molecules. So because of the, this matrix can have different physical properties, so that's why the connective tissue, it could be either liquid or it could be in the form of semi-liquid or gel, uh, or it could be in the form, it could be solid. Like if the, if the ground substance has calcium phosphate in it, like in the bone, so it becomes a bone. A bone is a solid type of connective tissue. If there is no such solid substances, it will be liquid, like in the blood, semi-solid uh, or gel-like, like like in the connective tissue, which is present in the uh, embryo or in the loose connective tissue and so on. It doesn't occur on free surfaces. All free surfaces by the free surface means that the surface that covers the body or lines it from the inside. So there is no connective tissue reaching the free surface. It's all epithelial tissue and it has a very good blood supply contrary to the epithelial tissue. And when we study the epithelium, we mentioned that it is the blood supply of the connective tissue that provides nutrients for the overlying epithelial tissue because the epithelial tissue does not have blood supply. Although the blood supply is not good in cartilage and in tendon. We will see that in a moment. Like, so that's why if you have an injury to one of your tendons, it will, like, it will take a long time to heal because it doesn't have a good blood supply. So that's why healing of tendons takes a long time. And if the tendon is completely torn, then it has to be treated surgically because it's not going to heal by itself because of it doesn't have that much blood supply, although it's a connective tissue. And it has a good nerve supply, except cartilage, which doesn't feel anything. This is just to remind you of the characters of epithelial tissue to compare them with uh, connective tissue. Now, I will go back to the connective tissue. It has cells and it has matrix. And matrix has a ground substance and fibers. So now we are going to study them one by one. So we will start with the cells. We have different types of cells. Some of them, they have the suffix blast, like chondroblast, fibroblast, which means that they produce, okay? So um, fibroblasts, they produce fibers. And they are the most abundant type of connective tissue, uh, of connective tissue cell. You can see them here. This is a fibroblast, and you can see the fibers coming out of them because they produce these fibers, like collagen fibers, elastin fibers, and reticular fibers. The blast type of cells, they produce fibers, they produce the matrix, the remaining part of the matrix, and they can multiply. The side type of cells, like chondrocytes, they cannot divide. They stop dividing, and they cannot produce matrix but they can repair it, they can maintain it. And then we have other cells like macrophages. This, as the name indicates, large, macro, phage, they eat phagocytosis. So they are developed from monocytes. Monocytes are type of circulating white blood cells, but they will leave the blood, blood vessels and reach the tissues, the connective tissue. And when they reside there, they become macrophages. Like for example, we have macrophages in our alveoli, 
in the lung, and these will take out the again the 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 carbon particles, the dust particles. They will eat them, and they will stay there. That's why. Um, if you look at the lungs of um, a smoker, you will find that it is mottled with black substance. These are clumps of macrophages, which are full with carbon particles. Also, they engulf bacteria and debris. Plasma cells are also part, they are derived from lymphocytes, which are present in the blood. And we'll study them later on. They, we have, they produce, these plasma cells, they produce antibodies to fight infection. Mast cells are important for allergic reaction. Adipocytes, as the name indicates, they, pro they are part of the adipose tissue. They produce fatty material. And whenever there is infection or whenever there is injury, so some of the white blood cells will migrate from the, from the blood vessels to the tissues in order to fight the infection or to repair or to remove the debris and so we have the neutrophils and the eosinophils sometimes are seen in the connective tissue as well migrating they're not circulating in the blood at that time they move to the connective tissue uh, the connective tissue has cells and these are the different types of cells and it has made it has ground substance and this is the ground substance consisting of fibers and um, sorry, uh, consisting of very large molecules like large protein molecules or carbohydrate uh, molecules. Sometimes, like in the bone, there is um, uh, calcium, calcium phosphate, uh, salts, and cartilage. There is chondroitin, and, and so on. So this ground substance gives the physical property of the of the tissue. Sometimes it's fluid, sometimes it's gel, sometimes it's solid. Because these large molecules, they can trap water. Also, they attach the fibers of the connective tissue. So having this ground substance, big, large amount of ground substance, can also act as a, a place where the nutrients and waste products move between the blood and the connective tissue or the nearby tissue. So they can move through that ground substance because the connective tissue is highly vascular, most of the connective tissue, as I mentioned. Now the fibers, we have three types of fibers. Most abundant here, we have the collagen fibers. You can see them here in this scanning electron microscope. They are thick um, bundles of collagen fibers, as you can see them here. They are not branched like this one. This is branched elastic fiber, or these are branch reticular fibers. So basically we have three types of fibers, collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers. The thickest one is the collagen fiber and it is not branched. It is tough, resistant to pull, okay? But it is pliable. You can just uh, compare it with the, uh, the ropes of a suspension bridge. The, the elastic fibers, on the other hand, they can stretch, unlike the collagen fiber, which cannot stretch. But the elastic fibers, they can stretch and then jump back to their normal shape. So they look like the rubber band. And so the collagen fibers are the most abundant. The elastin fibers are present, let's say, for example, in the cartilage of my auricle here. So once I fold it, it jumps back to the normal shape because it has a lot of elastic fibers. It's present in the lung because, as we will study that when we deal with the respiratory system, Inspiration is an active process, but expiration, when it is quiet, when you are doing it now, you don't need to squeeze yourself and exhale. It's the elastic recoil, we say, of the lung tissue, because the lung tissue has a lot of elastic fibers. So when you are actively stretching it, it will passively recoil back and you exhale. Okay, so that's, uh, that's because the elastic fibers, they can jump back to their uh, normal or uh, size after they are stretched. The third type of fibers are reticular fibers, and these are kind of collagen fibers, as I mentioned. They are present in the reticular lamina of the basement membrane. I have just mentioned that in the previous lecture. And they are, so they are tiny, thin, very thin and they are branched, 
uh, usually they form a framework like inside organs they form a framework to support and in many places they act like filters you know like you have a, a, a lot of threads that can act as filters so they trap large particles and this is what happens for example in the kidney now connective tissue can be classified as embryonic or mature of the mature connective tissue keep in mind again it's blood which and lymph which we are not going to study now it is cartilage and bone which is we are not going to study now we are going to study only the what we call connective tissue proper so it's either proper or cartilage and bone or it's blood this is the mature type and this is the embryonic type the embryonic type could be either mesenchyme and this is the origin of all connective tissue we say that it arises from mesenchymal cells these are present in the embryo the embryo is the first eight weeks of development in triuterine life we call it embryonic stage so it has large cells irregular in shape called mesenchymal cells there are reticular fibers in between, and it's like a fluid, like a, a, a semi-fluid ground substance. This is the origin of all embryonic tissue. And then after that, other tissues, other mature tissues are going to form from this. But in addition to that, in the, like in the umbilical cord of the fetus, the fetus is the second stage. It's after eight weeks of intra-embryonic life. We call it fetus. So we say embryonic life and fetal life. Both of them are during pregnancy, but the first eight weeks are called embryonic. And then after that, it's called fetal life. So this is um, the mucus or mucoid connective tissue is present in the umbilical cord of the fetus. And it contains fibroblasts, uh, the cells that produce fibers as the name indicates. Fibroblasts the cells that produce the fibers and the fibers here are collagen fibers they are not elastic fibers now the mature connective tissue just to remind you here i have just covered the embryonic i'm going to the mature i'm not going to cover these i'm going to cover the connective tissue proper so the connective tissue proper here we have loose connective tissue or areolar first type is areolar connective tissue and here we have fibers in multiple directions collagen fibers in multiple directions it's like semi-fluid or gel-like matrix it's present everywhere like you can see here this uh, it's like the packing material okay when you pack something any space you put loose areolar tissue uh, around it to protect to support okay to uh, to to strengthen so it is present almost everywhere especially in the subcutaneous tissue also it's present in part of the dermis as we, i will remind you next time then we have the adipose tissue which is another type of loose connective tissue where we have fat cells which store the fat inside them remember the inclusion bodies i mentioned in the last lecture large fat and then we have a thin rim of cytoplasm around it so under the microscope it will give you the appearance of like uh, chicken wire the cells they look like chicken wire and usually they are very close the adipose tissue very close to the areolar connective tissue this adipose tissue is in two types either the white adipose tissue as most of in the adult it's mainly white but in the newborn it is brown connective tissue it looks darker a little bit darker in color the reason for that is that brown connective tissue has a lot of blood vessels and the cells themselves the adipocytes they have a lot of pigmented mitochondria which contain iron material so it looks a little bit dark has a lot of blood supply the reason for that is that in the newborn this is the source of heat that control the body temperature as adults if we are cold then we're going to shiver we move our muscles and as the muscles contract they produce heat but shivering is not available in the newborn so that's why in order to control the body temperature then it is this tissue that has to burn mitochondria they are the furnaces of the cell they burn there's a lot of blood there to become hot and then it will control the temperature of the body adipose tissue is 
present in several places, as you can see it here, it's present under the skin, and, that's, and this is the basis of surgical procedures that are very common now, like liposuction and abdominoplasty, to remove the subcutaneous connective tissue. It is present around the viscera uh, for protection, for storage of energy, and in people who are starved, for example, here in this little uh, baby, you can see that he or she has sunken eyes because there is some fat that uh, protects the eyeball. So if this fat is not available, then you have sunken eyes. And one of the research interests now is that these cells are not always bad, but they can also be used as a source of stem cells for repairing or replacing damaged tissue. If you want to see this, watch this optional video about this subject using adipose cells and for that respect. And then we have reticular connective tissue. I think I mentioned about reticular connective tissue. Then we have dense connective tissue. Dense connective tissue, as the name indicates, there is a little ground substance here, or it's packed with a lot of collagen fibers, as you can see them here, in tendons and ligaments. And in between them, these cells are fibroblasts. And they, the, the fibers are present in one direction. So it's very strong, like in tendon. Tendon attaches the muscle to bone, and ligament attaches bone to bone. So that's the difference between tendon and ligament. And this is the kind of connective tissue that is avascular or has very low blood supply, very small blood supply. Then we have dense irregular connective tissue. The bundles of collagen fibers are in different directions. And this happens, for example, in the dermis. Again, we are going to study that next time. Also, it happens in capsules, in the fascia of muscles. These are other examples. Or we have elastic connective tissue, as I have just mentioned, in the lung, in the auricle. Okay?